So first off, I, I think as a person, there's millions of people who are failed screenwriters. I, it's, I think half the battle, it's actually just getting the script finished. Can you guys talk about the challenge of coming up with the idea and then growing it? And then on top of that, the challenges of actually finishing it? Or is it a lot harder than I'm imagining or a lot easier? So. No, I really appreciate you saying it's really hard to finish a script because it is. It's enormously difficult, like mentally, to to bring something to conclusion. Um, so thank you for saying that. But you know, we actually the the script was um, the idea and the bones were in shape when we got it, um, and it really excited us. Actually, so do you want to talk? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, honestly, Kasha said we inherited a draft of the script. So I think the mission for us was to kind of inject our sensibility and kind of the themes that that kind of drew us to the material um and our sensibility while still doing justice to the omen franchise and you know one of the bigger challenges is you have to write it and then obviously you have to get it into producible shape you know something that actually allows you to go out and make the thing so there's so many different phases um to go through and particularly when you're dealing with the sacred franchise like the omen you know, we very much wanted to exist in that world, but also make sure that we were contributing to the legacy of the franchise and kind of putting our stamp on it yeah. as screenwriters. Well, as screenwriters, is it first draft putting all of the wordy words out there and then just cutting it? Or is it just going with a very architectural kind of situation where you're very sparse with your outline and you write it out? Which method do both of you use? And I'm sure maybe I don't know if both of you are in sync as far as the way you guys start your your respective screenplays. I'm more of a uh, projectile vomiter. I'll just, you know, and maybe a little bit of an interpretive dancer. So I'll just like throw it all out there. And then you're very opposite. Yeah, I'm very yeah. much more structured and organized. But I mean, <laughs> the benefit of us working together is, you know, Kasha is obviously directing it. So right away, everything is written with an eye towards directing and making the movie which is really great because you're kind of able to in real time interrogate, how are we going to shoot this? How is this going to look? How can we write it in a way that kind of translates to the what we hope to achieve when we're filming it? Um, and it's very much our, our style of working is kind of like a figure eight. You know, we're constantly coming together to brainstorm and to write. Then we go off and write. We swap pages. So by the end of it, you know, we've touched every single page in Word to where you can't really differentiate who wrote what because yeah. it's kind of a constant collaboration going back and forth. And it's also really nice because Tim's so producerially minded that if I write something and I give it to him, he'll say like, okay, talk me through how you logistically think you can do this. And that's enormously helpful because I think part of the writing process, a lot of, get, of time gets lost to kind of just dreaming things in the air that might never meet the ground. And so immediately Tim, I think, has such a great instinct to pull things down to earth so that you're working with the nitty gritty right away. Having said all that, we did make it hard on ourselves. We first film, you know, set in Rome at an orphanage with a bunch of kids and practical fire and gags and, you know, a bunch of really challenging Babies stuff. Babies and yeah. riots. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like broke but, yeah. all the rules for, for making your life easy on your first movie. Whoops, daisies. You know, on, on making your life easy, I think one of the most underrated genres within, not, just not even the horror thriller genre, it's the idea of body horror. A lot of people think body horror is very superficial visual, but it, it goes, the best ones go beyond that. It's a psychological, emotional, time spiritual experience. How frustrating was it for you, Kasha, just to actually, this is what you're wanting. Um, I haven't seen the movie, but I'm assuming this is what you want to do with the body horror thing, yeah. what you guys want to do, but then you also have to fight for that real rating, you know, it's, and tell people, hey, this is what I'm going for. And this is, I need to keep these scenes in and talk about that process. Must've been frustrating for you guys. No, I'm so happy that you asked about that because it was such a journey, like a very long journey for us. And this is, yeah, most of our horror in this film is about, it's a, you know, psychological thriller and very suspenseful, but it's also a lot of really graphic imagery that pertains to the body, especially the female body. And I think we're, we're you know, body horror is so interesting because you're constantly examining our emotional relationship to our physical form and our fears that surround that. And so it's, I think it's really important, especially when we're talking about, you know, this movie's about birth and, and the capabilities of the female body. So I think you can't shy away from showing female anatomy getting torn up because that is exactly what 
the crux of this film is about. Um, and what's, what's interesting is that there's one scene in particular where we show a very certain part of the body and we don't shy away from it. And that was the one image that kept us in a battle with the ratings board. I think we went back and forth five times. Um, and it's, it, the shot, the piece of the body that we're showing was shown in like this very, it wasn't sexualized, you know? And I think seeing the female form in a non-sexual light is something that a lot of people are not used to seeing in film. And it becomes very confronting. And what's happening, the, the whole shot is about what is happening to the female form. But I think because we're not used to seeing the female form this way, it the actual body part became maybe offensive to the to the ratings board. So I don't know. I'm kind of. But what would? Yeah, and like you said, I, I think one of the the main themes of the film is somebody losing, you know, autonomy over themselves and their body, beginning to question their reality. So I think body horror was so integral to all of that. And we're such huge horror fans, you know, practical effects or something that, that are, that's really, really important to us. So um, we knew it'd be challenging. It'd be, it'd be really crucial to the spirit of the film. So speaking of screenwriting, it's like we put that in initially and kind of say, this is our vision for what this movie is. Um, hopefully you're on board. And, and thankfully, 20th and Disney were on board. And we knew it was going to be challenging to execute and to get that R rating. And, and thankfully, we got it. Yeah. But Truth, it's, oh, good. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just, we're talking about the vagina, you know, just to be, sorry, I realized that we're being so vague, but that's what we're talking about. And, and I think that, and I could talk this whole podcast about this shot, by the way, so cut me off, but like, I grew up on, on Georgia O'Keeffe, you know, I just thought that this image was going to be beautiful. And I, I was so naive. I didn't think that it was going to be such a controversial image. <laughs> Look, I'll be I'll be honest. I haven't seen The Omen since I was a kid because I was traumatized. And I think it starred Gregory Peck and Lee Remick, iconic actors. If I recall, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot more than I have. But speaking of iconic actors, just looking at your film, along with your lead, maybe the fourth person on the call sheet is probably maybe Charles Dance. I mean, can you just talk about Sonia Braga, Bill Nye? Just how awesome was it just to have these actors under your sort of direction. And then I'm sure they brought so much out to the story for both of you guys and enhanced what you guys were doing. Is that overshooting or what do they bring? So really quickly, Tammy, we always said one of the, what we told ourselves originally when we got the project was we have to do justice to the original by the way we cast it. Because Gregory Peck, that was a really big deal at the time to kind of elevate the status of a horror film and to legitimize the horror film with its cast. So we knew we had to, you know, casting was going to be a huge, huge part of it. And we had to do justice to the original in that way. Yeah. The whole, like the Gregory Peck, um, Lee Bremick about it all forces you to take the content seriously, you know? And I think that's what makes The Omen such a brilliant movie is that it's, um, it's a drama first and foremost, you know, and all of the performances are so grounded. So the, the horror becomes real life. And that's, we were so lucky with our cast because not only did we have a cast that of such such a caliber, but but also people who are willing to engage with the material and take it very seriously and and accept this reality into their lives. And, and it was, we, not to sound like Mr. Rogers, but we were just so lucky because everybody was very open and generous with each other. You know, we had, you know, a group of, of young actors and then these these very prestigious actors and there was no ego. There is like just a lot of, a lot of collaboration and a lot of love flowing and like just knock on wood. That's how it always is. Yeah. That's how it always should be. I feel like. So this morning I, I was just editing just a little YouTube video and for some reason, two and a half hours just went by and like water. So that's just a microscope to what I'm thinking you guys feel on post what? Yeah. <laughs> my two and a half hours is tantamount or not even equal to what you guys do for days, weeks, months? What was the post like for you? And are you guys actually animals who hibernate and never leave your editing area just for months on end? Or am I overshooting that as well? So no, that yeah. is very accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think from, from kind of development with the script to now, and we're still technically working on the movie. You know, we were looking at the film print this morning. Um, it's been about two years and it was about a year in post-production, you know, with the strikes, which extended it 
you know, a bit, but the way you characterized it is absolutely true. You're, you're living in a dark room. You only have a few people that you have contact with. <laughs> you, it's a bubble, you know, it is its own kind of um, confinement in a way. Yeah. So that's what's so crazy. Once the trailer and the teaser come out and marketing materials is it's kind of uh, you're sharing it with the world for the first time after keeping it to yourself for so long. It's yeah. really surreal. We're joking that it's like somebody took our private diary that we've been writing in for two years and is now like reading it aloud to the yeah. public. <laughs> okay, so I haven't seen it yet. What can cinephiles like me expect on a, on a broad sense without giving too much away regarding the story? We're very excited to see this. So in general, what can we expect? You go first. Well, I mean, like we had talked about, it's it's a studio film and, you know, it's not every day we get an opportunity, you know, as first time filmmakers to work on this stage. And we really wanted to go for broke and take big, big swings. You know, I think we're really inspired by horror films, particularly in the seventies. Um, you know, body horror was really important to us, but also like Kasha was saying, we love, love films, you know, like the exorcist or Rosemary's baby where you get attached to the characters and the horror really stems from your attachment to that character. And we like movies where playing around with subjectivity and kind of psychological horror and people coming undone. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's a movie that once it kicks into gear, it's pretty unrelenting. And we wanted to kind of explore a, a brand of horror that's really special to us. This is what it should feel like, basically, is I don't know if you ever use exfoliants on your face. You look like you have fantastic skin, so maybe you don't have to do this. But you put, ex, you know, an exfoliant on your face and you think, oh, that kind of tingles. Well, that kind of, that's getting warmer. Okay, this is kind of burning. Okay, this is really burning. And then you'll do anything to get it off, include slicing off your face. You know, that's like kind of how you should feel throughout our movie is that it was really important for us to give people time to sink into this world, get to know the lead character, because I think it's really important. That's what we learned from The Omen was that it's really important to get to know the complexities of your character's internal landscape so that you really appreciate what these horrific acts mean to them. And then the horror starts to escalate once you really are grounded in that person in the world. And then by the end of the movie, hopefully you want to slice your face off. <laughs> That's amazing. Final couple of questions is you guys get this all the time, but what is the key when two writers decide to collaborate on a script or some, or just a project, what is the key to a successful collaboration, especially when, Maybe both of you don't are, are not in conjunction with every single second along the way on a storytelling level. What are the keys to that? I mean, it's an obvious one, but it's really just trust. I mean, you, you have to be willing to to really voice everything because having a sounding board is what makes it so special, is that you get somebody who can interrogate an idea, who can validate an idea, who can question an idea. So as long as you kind of share a certain sensibility, I think having two people's input and trusting one another, I think, can really strengthen anything. And I think that's certainly been the case with us. Yeah, yeah it's really nice actually having, because we're, we're also in a romantic partnership, you know, so there's already just no shame ever. Yeah. But I think that that is kind of the key to, because the worst thing is sharing an idea and somebody laughing at you, you know, that that's what we all have nightmares about. And I think what Tim does that's so nice is I'll share a crazy idea and he'll think about it and the next day come back to me. And, you know, like we had this idea for the birthing scene and, and Tim was like, that's really far out there and really interesting, you know, never, never said no right away and never laughed at me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that extends also to being on set. It's like one of the most valuable things you can learn is, is being unafraid to fail, especially in public. You know, and that oftentimes I think the most special bits of anything arise out of repeated failure. And I think there's this temptation when you're on set in front of hundreds of people to to get everything right right away. And what you realize is that the most special outcome comes through failure. And I think the same is true with writing is you got to be pre ready, willing and kind of look forward to failing because it's only going to get right through failure. Yeah. So, so final question is, can each of you name one of your all time favorite films and what is it about the specific movie that still resonates with you today? Thanks for your time, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. I mean, I think one of the movies that terrified me the most that I loved growing up was the vanishing the 1988 film. Um, just because it was 
purely grounded in reality and really struck at at the core of everything I was terrified about, like having somebody I love disappear from out beneath my nose and having no power in that situation. And there's really no supernatural influence on that. That's just like the human heart, you know? Um, but yeah, what would you say? Yeah. I mean, this will sound counterintuitive as a screenwriter, but 2001 A Space Odyssey was the movie that initially broke my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just because it does to this day, like, is a testament to the visual power of storytelling. And I think I, we always try to keep that in mind is that at the end of the day, like you are looking at moving pictures and if you can tell a story through visuals, that's the strongest, you know, form of visual storytelling there is, in my opinion, is 2001. And just very quickly, did the ending of The Vanishing break you when you're the first time you're watching it? And I hope you weren't just really young watching The Vanishing for the first time. Oh, I was. Yeah. Yeah. That may be terrifying to <laughs> this day. Like even having seen it so many times, that ending, the whole thing, but especially that ending always gets me. But also it didn't help because my mother would, would say, my name is Rex and this is very strange whenever anything really bizarre happened. <laughs> so it's just like embedded into my DNA now. But, but yeah, that is the, I mean, Having somebody do a horrific act like that just because they wanted to know if they could pull it off is is this ugh, that's worse than any kind of supernatural horror I could think of. Thank you guys and so much for. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and on that note. And on that note, yeah. And on that note, thank you guys so much for your time. And I am definitely excited to see the movie. I will. I will just. I I love talking to you guys. I'm gonna pay for a ticket. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna eat some Thai food right after in celebration. So and you're you're in Los Angeles, so it's playing on film too at the Vista and the New Beverly. If you yeah. want to go see a film print, it's oh, also that. playing. You know, Dolby Vision everywhere. But um, yeah. but if you're in Los Angeles and you want to see it on a film print, that's the way to do it. That was a very film geeky thing for you guys to do. So really appreciate yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. you have a great day. Uh, yeah. Bye bye.